Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back to Star Citizen, and thank you so much for joining me, guys, for a new Intergalactic Aerospace Expo video and a new day. This is this is day eight, and day eight is the day of Drake Interplanetary. So normally Drake gets shunned away <laughs> from the uh, Expo Center, but this year it seems like they're here. They're on the floor. And I think it's a, this is this is a uh, good idea because the Drake halls normally are darker. Now this one has a little bit more light, so you guys can get to see the uh, awesome Drake ships better. So let's go ahead and get started. Drake Interplanetary. Now I am going to recommend a lot of ships here today. Uh, not because it's Drake, but because these ships are very very special, and most of them are very useful in game, at least according to me according to my my opinions on the game according to what i like in the game so without further ado here is the drake herald so the drake herald is an an info runner it's it's pretty much a, a smaller mercury star runner so this thing is a pretty much a hacking ship this is a a communications ship this is a hacking ship this 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 ship is mostly to do with electronic warfare so some people say because the mercury star runner is in the game this thing is now obsolete i don't believe that i i don't agree i don't agree with that sentiment the drake herald is still a very very good ship it's a very good data running ship it is still a hacking ship the differences between this and the mercury star runner is that the mercury star runner is dual purpose it is cargo running, it is multi-crew, and it's data running. This thing is purely data running. Now, here are some of, the, some of the advantages that the Drake has over the MSR. For one, this thing is faster. This thing is blisteringly fast. I mean, take a look at those large engines. This thing is blisteringly fast in a straight line. This thing has a smaller signature. So imagine you're, you're moving closer to an enemy position or a moon or a station somewhere that you want to, you know, that you want to hack or do something. This thing has a much, much smaller signature than the Mercury Star Runner. I think that the Drake Interplanetary Herald will be a lot more offensive at the E-Warfare info running than the Mercury Star Runner. Because it's fast, it's small, it's stealthier, and to be honest, it's 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 more suited to that role in that way. You can go between places much quicker. You're you're much harder to detect. You're stealthier. You're smaller. You're more nimble. You're more agile. So, in that way, the Drake Herald is, in my opinion, still one of the best hacking slash info running slash data running ship. Now, can I recommend this ship? Yes, absolutely. If you're inter if you're interested in that sort of gameplay, eh, this will be a very nice ship. This will be a very nice ship. So yes, I 100% recommend this thing, and it's very cheap at the moment. This thing is like I think this is always cheap, <laughs> but I think it's going to go up and go up in price when that hacking slash data running gameplay is in the game. The price on this thing will go up. This is like eighty dollars. This thing is like eighty eighty five dollars, and it's at the moment, it has zero functionality, uh, except for, you know, to fly from point A to point B. That is it. This is all it can do right now. But in the future, this thing will be very useful. Moving on to another small Drake ship. And this is the Drake Buccaneer. The Drake Buccaneer is supposed to be a light interceptor. Light interdiction interceptor. To be honest, guys, this was one of the ships that I was really looking forward to to it when it was still in concept. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to pick pick this up in concept. I I wasn't paying attention, I guess, uh, during that time period. But this thing is out. It's it's been out for a very long time. People don't like it. People say this is bad and all that. Um, but this is a good ship. This is a very nice fighter. It, it's a very fast fighter. In a straight line, this thing is quite fast. It's like it goes like a, I think a thousand three hundred something meters per second. Pretty much, you can you can catch up to any ship. You can catch up to any ship 
in this thing in a straight line. So some of the issues that people have with this thing is that its loadouts are a little bit lackluster. So you got the size ones on the wingtips, and then you can, you know, have size twos or size threes here in their inner pylons. And of course, you can get that massive size four as well. But the only problem that I have with the Buccaneer is that it should be a little bit more maneuverable. Because it's a light fighter, it needs to be a tiny bit more maneuverable, in my opinion. If it's a little bit more maneuverable, then it'll become a really nice ship. But to me, it's still sufficient as a light interceptor. You can pretty much catch anything in the game if they try to run away from you. Um, the size 4 gun is nice, but yeah, it's, it's overall not, not a bad ship. Not a bad ship. Uh, would I recommend it? Could I recommend it? Personally, uh, it's very difficult to, to recommend a fighter. Because if that's going to be your, you know, your only ship, you're missing out a lot on a lot of gameplay. But as a light fighter, mm, yeah, but as I said, it could, it could be a little bit more nimble. It could be a little bit more maneuverable. So that's why I can't really recommend it. But I enjoy flying it, and I enjoy, you know, dogfighting in it. Moving on, moving on. To all of the Drake ships, to be honest, guys, are wonderful. Beautiful ships, both aesthetically and, and in terms of functionality, too. Here is the Cutlass Blue. Yes, here is the Cutlass Blue. Now, I had a video out on this thing long time ago when it came out. Literally, the day that they released that thing, just hours later, I had a video out on this thing. But when I moved my videos from my older channel to this channel, I lost this one, guys. I, I don't know what happened to this video. <laughs> I lost it. I lost the uh, Drake Cutlass Blue video. Now, I own a Drake Cutlass Blue, so I can do another video on this thing. It's, it's a police interceptor, pretty much. It is a variant of the Cutlass Black. It is a police interceptor. I was waiting for this thing for such a long time, guys. I had this thing ever since it was concepted and i was really really looking forward to seeing this and it didn't disappoint me this is a really nice ship this is a bounty hunting ship so if you're into that bounty hunting kind of a gameplay and if you start off with an avenger stalker and eventually you move move on to this this is a great ship for that look at these stasis pods so you got 12 stasis pods 12 stasis pods so a really nice ship this is a really, really nice ship. So you get all of that awesomeness that the Cutlass Black has, plus more functionality if you if you are into combat and um, and bounty hunting. Now, one of the really awesome things about the Cutlass Blue is that it has a quantum in, uh, quantum dis disruptor. So you can't pull someone out of quantum, but you can stop somebody from quantum jumping and running away. So, originally when this thing was concepted, this was supposed to have a, a better engine than the Cutlass Black and a little bit more, you know, more armor. But armor isn't in-game, and to be honest, the engines feel exactly the same as the Cutlass Black. So, in that sense, because the bounty hunting game isn't in-game yet, it's very difficult to recommend this ship. Because it's, a, it's virtually a Cutlass Black with less cargo at the moment so it's very difficult to recommend this thing but if you're if you if you know you're going to be interested in bounty hunting and combat this ship will be good this ship will be good once uh that sort of gameplay is in the game moving on to the cutlass black so you guys have heard me for the past what is this eight days now it's me saying you know get a starter ship and starter package and that's all you need blah 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 this is the ultimate starter ship, guys. It's not so much as a starter ship because it's a little bit expensive. It's $100. But there is a game package with the Cutlass Black. And you can pretty much have the game and get a Cutlass Black. And why do I recommend this ship if you want that up-tiered, upscaled starter ship? Because, guys, this ship can do it all. This ship literally does it all. You can carry cargo... You can fight. This thing can hold its own in a fight. You got a decent sized cargo hold here. 50 SCU. 
It's just a good ship. The Cutlass Black is a great ship, except for one problem. This thing has one, one pretty, pretty big problem, to be honest. This thing has no secondary entry or exit method out of the ship. So the only way to get out of the ship is to get out of the seat, literally walk through here, and that's it. If this is blocked for some reason, if it's glitched, if it's blocked, if there's a fire here, there's no method of ex exiting the ship. And for some reason, Drake doesn't have ejection seats. <laughs> so, mm, that's a bit of a problem. Like the Freelancer has two methods of entry and exit, right? The Constellation has that, but this thing doesn't. But overall, like if you're looking for a good ship in, in Star Citizen, something that can do a lot for you, cargo, fighting, Cutlass Black is amazing. I cannot recommend the Cutlass Black enough if you're into that. Moving on to the Cutlass Red. This is the ambulance search and rescue version of the Cutlass Black. So this thing supposedly is like an ambulance. Now, some people were upset that this thing can no longer... Be pretty much... All right, let me go ahead and reword that. So this thing, can you can no longer respawn in the Cutlass Red. So you can no longer respawn in the Cutlass Red in these beds. And people were really, really angry at that. Now you can still treat people here. You can still stabilize people here until you take them to a hospital. But you can no longer use this thing as a spawn point. And if you guys have watched my other videos, you'll, you'll know my opinions on spawning inside of a ship. I don't agree with that. Even with the Carrick, they should take that... They take that spawn point away from the Carrick as well. It's it's a very silly idea. It's it's a it's going down a rabbit's hole, rabbit hole that we don't want to go down to, guys. People shouldn't be able to respawn in a ship. If you die, you respawn at a hospital. Because what happens if people constantly just respawn in a ship over and over and over again? So you kill the the Carrick's gunner, respawns in the med bay, gets out, puts a new uh, pair of armor on gets back in the turret over and over and over again think of that type of annoying gameplay for something like the javelin or an idris i don't agree with people respawning on a ship so tell me what you guys think do you, do you think it's a good idea to allow people to respawn in a med bay inside of a ship any size ship i personally don't agree with that if, if you're dead if you die you respawn at a hospital Medbay should only be for stabilizing or treating people and preventing them from dying. You know what I mean? That that's that's how I feel medbay should be. So in that sense, I I really don't care that this thing is no longer a spawn point. And I thought that was a really cheesy arcadey thing anyway. So this thing is an ambulance. It was promised as an ambulance. It still is a really nice ambulance. It can still function as a as a you know paramedic ship. It can st still do everything that it needs to do. It's good, to be honest. This this thing is very good. So if you're into that kind of rescue, search and rescue type gameplay, then this ship is for you. And of course, with the death of a, death of a spaceman being implemented in its uh, in its initial iteration in the game right now, this thing is actually useful. The gameplay for this thing has has been introduced, guys. So if you want to play as a paramedic if you want to rescue people you actually can people will send out you know helps a help uh, a beacon and you can go down to the planet save them from dying and really help them so people will really appreciate you if you do that kind of a gameplay moving on do i recommend the cutlass red absolutely absolutely this thing is really really good moving on to the drake caterpillar guys this is one of the best ships in Star Citizen. Now, it recently went up in price. So it was a $295, I think, $290. It went up to $330. So this thing is really good. This thing is really good. From day one, this ship has been absolutely amazing. Now, why is that? Because it can carry a lot of cargo. And it's not just because it can carry cargo. This thing is very modular. This thing is extremely modular. So each of these these sections 
is a separate section on its own. This thing will be very, very um, customizable. And you have this, this command and control pod, this cab right here, which is able to detach from the main body of the caterpillar. So this thing is awesome. At the moment, this is, this is still the best cargo carrying ship in the game. Of course, with the introduction of the star lifters, this thing is, uh, you know, there's some more competition for the caterpillar, but this thing, in my opinion, will be one of the best ships in game, one of the most customizable, one of the, the most modular ships in game. So you have a track to beam operator room here. This thing is just great. It looks good. It's armored. It's, it's tanky. It's strong. You can house up to eight people in this ship. Up to eight people can be supported on this ship. This thing is great. So can't really recommend the Caterpillar enough. If you're interested in that sort of cargo carrying gameplay, if you're interested in that, you know, um, how should I put this? Um, nefarious <laughs> Drake, uh, Drake interplanetary gameplay, pretty much piracy, AKA piracy. If you're a pirate, then this thing is great for you. This th caterpillar is absolutely amazing. All right, guys, welcome to the lower levels. And here is the Drake hover bike. So this is the Drake dragonfly. Now I have two of these things. I have the yellow jacket and the black dragonfly. And to be honest, guys, I was I, I never could, you know, get to use these things properly. The the grav lift thing, the grav lift technology, because they obviously hover, right? So they, they don't drive on, on tires or anything like that. They hover. They're they're basically hover bikes. And to be honest, guys, I could never get this thing to work. I could never, ever, ever, for the life of me, ever get this thing to work. It's always buggy, it's always crashing, it's it's never, never a good experience to, to fly on the uh, on the dragonflies. So take it for what it's worth. I, I can't really recommend the hover bikes because they're just so buggy. They're so, so buggy. Moving on. There's nothing else over there. Moving on to the hollow tables. Now here here is going to be, we're going to see some really nice ships here in the, in the hollow, in the hollow section. Whoa, that was a massive lag spike. <laughs> So this is the Drake Corsair. This is the Drake Corsair. This is supposedly the Drake's 400i, kind of. Now this thing, guys, is going to be an amazing ship. This is an explorer ship. This is this is a Drake exploration ship. But I'm just going to put this out there. This this will be one of the best daily drivers out there. I have one, and I will keep one forever. The ship isn't out yet, it's in concept, so it's very bold of me to claim such things, but I reckon this ship is going to be the best, the best daily driver out there. This thing is armed to the teeth with some really nice guns. And of course, because it's a large ship, it's not going to be maneuverable, but then again, this gives you a lot of functionality. So obviously this, this can, you know, explore, but that's still yet to be determined what exploration means but just looking at the ship as it is as it stands right now this will be one of the best daily driving multi-crew ships out there so if you're looking for a multi-crew ship if you're looking for a even a solo daily driver you really can't go wrong with the drake corsair trust me guys if you if you're interested in one pick one up before they go up in price it's still sitting at $215 at the moment, but this thing will be released somewhere next year. Somewhere in the next 12 months, this will be in game. And when it when it does go in, go in game, this thing is going to go up in price. So if you're looking to pick this up, now is the time. Now is the time to pick it up before it goes up in price. And trust me, guys, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. This, as I said, we don't know what the exploration gameplay will entail, but... We know that a ship like this will be great as a daily driver, just like the 400i, and it looks awesome. And it's super, super heavily armed. Size 5 guns, size 5 turrets, size 4 guns, size 4 missiles. Amazing ship. Amazing ship. Moving on to another awesome Drake ship. As I told you guys at the beginning, I'm, there's a lot of ship, good ships here in Drake, in the Drake lineup. So this is the Drake Vulture. 
this is the drake vulture and you guys can see there's a whole lot of more detail in this hollow viewer because they're working on this thing guys this is actively in development i have one i i've always wanted one this thing looks amazing in the yellow so you guys might be wondering specter what the hell is it then so this is a starter salvage ship this is like the prospector for mining but except for salvage so this this is a single seat single person salvage ship and let me tell you guys when this thing comes online probably hopefully i think it's q2 2022 this will be so popular this will be really popular when the salvage mechanic comes in so this is this is this is slated to come out q2 2022 with salvage so if you're interested in this thing again this is the time to pick it up because once it does it will go up in price at the moment this thing is sitting at 140 dollars it is sitting at 140 dollars and let me tell you this this will be a really nice ship just like the prospector if you're looking you, you know if you're looking for that industrial type of gameplay if you're looking to make money inside the game look no further than the drake vulture moving on to this awesome ship this is the drake kraken i think guys this is the best solo ship you should definitely get this ship and solo it <laughs> i'm kidding guys this this is like a giant aircraft carrier this is like a giant behemoth of an aircraft carrier from drake and this thing is great this thing is great i know i'm recommending every single drake ship but guys trust me trust me this ship is going to be the end all be all for most ships out there this this is this is probably going to be the end goal for a lot of people out there and you might be wondering well specter why are you recommending this ship so much i'm not recommending it per se but i'm just going to tell you that this thing is going to be awesome this is very very expensive the ship is limited it's hull limited and it's super expensive guess how many seconds it took for this thing to get sold out in war bond so actually no not in war bond in 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 store credits so you can either buy this thing for war bond or in store credit so guess how many how many seconds it took for this thing to get sold out literally 25 seconds guys it took 25 seconds for the the, the in-store credit version of this thing to get sold out when it came online just a couple of hours ago 25 seconds the war bond version was sold out within 50 seconds <laughs> it's so difficult to get your hands on one because it's awesome it, it is it is an amazing ship it's a carrier it has a ton of cargo space like 3000 something cargo space i see you have cargo space it's a giant aircraft carrier from drake this is the quintessential pirate base this is the quintessential rebel slash pirate slash outlaw base you can literally carry a whole family of drake ships and just constantly move from point a to point b it's an amazing ship it's an amazing ship it's difficult to recommend because obviously you're going to need a crew of like 50 to run this thing this is like the, on the same size as a javelin or you know a, a an idris a really nice ship but you need to have the you know the crew and the motivation to run one and of course it's going to cost a lot remember that this is going to cost a ton to run and operate and and this thing is going to be very easy to destroy if you don't look after this so if you have one of these you need to have a polaris you need to have a perseus you need to have a hammerhead all of those things need to be you know need to be around this thing you need to travel as a fleet you need to protect this thing really nicely and you're going to need a lot of people to do all of that so you need a big org you need an org with at least 500 to a thousand people actively playing and participating of course with ai as well to run this thing properly otherwise you're just going to get blown up if you if you buy one and you only have like let's just say 10 10 friends you have a couple of fighters on here you have a cutlass black you have a a, a buccaneer flying around that's not going to be enough a retaliator is going to come and cut this thing in half this thing isn't going to be really nicely armored though 
that's one of the downsides something like a javelin a military actual military ship is going to have a whole heck of a lot more armor than this thing a couple of size 10 torpedoes will cut this thing in half so this thing needs to be protected you have to have a fleet around this thing you have to have a hammerhead you have to have a polaris you have to have a perseus to protect this thing a starfarer to refuel it do you know what i mean and of course there's the privateer version of this 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 is the kraken and then you have the privateer which is like a like a um a souped up banu merchantman essentially a even a larger a bigger uh floating flying market so in conclusion this ship is amazing but it's very difficult to recommend that's a personal choice whether you want to buy this or not because it's very expensive and it's going to be a nightmare to run and to crew all the time i mean honestly even if you have a big org are you going to always find 50 people to help you run this ship just just this ship alone i'm not talking about the the other members of the fleet just this ship alone you're going to need around at, all right ben bare minimum bare minimum you're going to need 20 people it's not easy to find 20 friends you know even if, if you have an org 20 people to be always online to play with you in a game so take it for what it's worth it's going to be an amazing ship um if you have the friends if you have you know the org mates to, to play with you definitely recommend this ship definitely recommend this ship but just remember it sold out in 20 seconds <laughs> 20 seconds anyways ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching i think day eight of the intergalactic aerospace expo tomorrow is day nine and of course we got day 10 and that is it for the 2951 intergalactic aerospace expo so thank you so much for watching i hope to see you guys tomorrow oh and don't forget don't forget tomorrow is misc day tomorrow is misc day where they're going to unveil a new ship a new exploration ship to pretty much counter the the Carrick. so it's going to be called the misc odyssey look forward to that so ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time